We used to think that lactic acid was just the burn, right? Just the burn byproduct when we exercise. I vividly remember running the mile in middle school and having my PE teacher just telling me, that was just the lactic acid burn, you gotta work through the lactic acid burn. Well, science has progressed a lot since then, and we now know that lactic acid isn't what's causing the burn. As a matter of fact, lactic acid gets disassociated into something known as lactate, which it turns out is a crazy cool signaling device and also an energy source for the body, and more like a rite of passage that allows your body to adapt versus just metabolic waste. You see, when you work out and you go through anaerobic glycolysis, you start to create lactic acid. Yes, it is a byproduct, and then it gets disassociated into lactate and hydrogen. The hydrogen is largely buffered. It ends up getting exhaled through your CO2, so it's kind of irrelevant in this particular conversation. The point is, is that lactic acid, yes, it's a byproduct, but is it a waste byproduct? No. That's where we're gonna have some fun. Hey, please do hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications and never ever miss our daily videos. Then after this video, if you wanna check out something cool, check out Juve, okay? If you've ever heard of red light therapy, it sounds like woo woo witch doctor stuff at first, but it's actually really darn fascinating with some really compelling research. So go ahead and check them out. Red light therapy has become a big part of my recovery simply because what it can do at a cellular level. It's just really interesting stuff. And if you click the link down below, you can check them out and learn a little bit more. They're a big supporter of this channel, so I extend a huge thank you to them for all the support. All right, now let's dive in. Now, before I do get into the nitty gritty, I want you to know that there is a true practical use and application with the stuff I'm talking about. This isn't just informational, okay? People get tired of informational content. Like, it, this is practical. If you can learn to harness the power of lactate, well, based on what I'm gonna explain to you here, you can do a lot, and not just with your body, with your brain too. So if lactic acid and lactate is not the metabolic waste, then what is? Okay, let's cover that first. What is actually the metabolic waste is inorganic phosphate. Okay, keeping it very simple, ATP, you create energy, okay? You create ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and you cleave off a phosphate molecule. That means you have a spare inorganic phosphate molecule, okay? That phosphate builds up, and that is largely what contributes to fatigue, not the lactic acid. As a matter of fact, there is research that indicates that lactate combines with adrenaline and epinephrine and actually helps combat the inorganic phosphate that makes you fatigued. So the lactic acid burn that's making you not be able to run the mile in middle school is actually something that is helping you combat the inorganic phosphate that's building up in your muscle. Talk about like a, like a comeback story, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this video down into three of the key benefits that you're gonna see with lactate. And that way you're gonna be able to harness the power of them, right? Okay, the first thing I wanna talk about is that it's an amazing energy source in and of itself. Lactate, turns out, can be used for energy directly and indirectly. Now, think of it as like the coolant in a car, okay? It's critical. You need to have coolant flowing through your radiator, flowing through your engine block, and ultimately keeping the engine cool so it can function. Well, we're not literally talking about keeping the muscles cool, but we're keeping the muscles uh, basically combating that inorganic phosphate. But there's some interesting evidence per the Journal of Physiology that shows that it spares glucose production and glucose in general. What does that mean though, it spares glucose? It means that lactate is being used as a fuel by the muscle somehow to the point where it's not having to use the glucose. So somewhere along the line, as you start training at a higher intensity, your body crosses this like magical threshold where the lactate becomes an energy source and it can spare the glucose for use at another time. That's so cool. It's also the most important driver for gluconeogenesis. Now I've seen this in other journals before when I'm talking about fat adaptation, keto fasting, things like that, and I've never really put it together with working out or seen other journals related to working out and exercise. So what I mean by the primary driver of gluconeogenesis? Gluconeogenesis is where your body creates glucose or carbohydrates, glucose, from other substrates, right? From proteins, from amino acids, things like that. Well, it turns out that lactate is the primary driver for gluconeogenesis. I don't know if this fully is clicking, so let me say this so it makes perfect sense. When you work out, you create lactate, okay? It turns out that this lactate can go to the liver and turn into glucose, 
which can therefore go back to the muscle and create energy and create lack. We just realize that our bodies are like a perpetual motion device, a perpetual energy device, because it recycles the waste byproduct of lactate that everyone threw under the bus for so long and utilizes it as fuel. But then additionally, it's a direct fuel for the brain. There's a study published in the Intensive Care Medical Journal. Okay, it demonstrated that lactate is now being used as a neuroprotective. So when given a lactate injection, they notice that the brain upregulates the uptake of lactate directly in order to preserve or protect after an injury. Okay, that's really cool. Then there was a study that was published in Sage Journals that shows that lactate is directly oxidized by the brain. What that means is that the brain has the ability to take lactate and oxidize it and use it for fuel. And it's a very good fuel. And then it not only does that, but of course it helps produce glucose, which can fuel the brain. I often wondered why after a good hard workout where I got the lactic acid burn, why my brain would light up. Or if you've ever done BFR, blood flow restriction training. Okay, I've talked about that in other videos. That creates a hypoxic state and it creates a lot of lactate. Well, my brain would always be lit up to the point where on days where I have massive cognitive load, I would try to do some BFR training because for whatever reason it worked. I thought it was almost superstitious, but there's an actual reason, okay? So it turns out that that lactate can fuel the brain. But now let's lean into some signaling device stuff. What is a signaling device? Well, like I said in the beginning, lactate is more like a rite of passage. When we work out, when we exercise, we adapt to that. Now the archaic embryonic way of thinking would say, we work out, we break down muscle, muscle rebuilds. That's like, I guess I shouldn't do that in a robot voice. I guess that's futuristic. It should be more like caveman. But either way, the point is, is that that's a very embryonic way of looking at things. The reason we adapt is probably more so biochemical and the actual crazy cool response that's happening inside our body. And it looks like lactate is a big part of that. Lactate serves as a signaling device. The body recognizes that lactate is there and it says, okay, well, cool. As these cells and muscles are saturated in lactate, they're getting signals to grow, to get stronger, to develop, to become more resilient, to have less inflammation and be just a better functioning muscle. But it doesn't stop there. It also acts as a signaling device for brain-derived neutrophil factors, so BDNF which affects your brain. It's a direct fuel for the brain and grows brain cells, literally. So we are literally growing brain cells through BDNF, which is activated by lactate. So, so much for being a meathead, right? If you build muscle and you have more lactic acid, it can actually make you smarter. And I say that quite literally, and I know I overuse literally, but this time I literally mean literally, okay? Then we have the direct effect of lactate fueling the brain. So we have a double whammy. So yeah, you wanna be smart? Get lactic acid burn. And probably the most forward thinking, really cool thing with lactate is its ability to be an endogenous histone deacetylase inhibitor. Tuning out, I know, probably clicking off of this video. What is that? A histone deacetylase inhibitor means it opens the library of your genetic potential, okay? Histone deacetylase, um, is usually, if you have HDAC, you need HDAC inhibition, okay? So basically, your genetic library is locked. It's closed, and it can only open so much. But if you inhibit histone deacetylase, then you can make it so that you can access more of your genetic library. It's not gonna change your genes, but you're gonna be able to express more of your genes or express more uh, transcription factors, which means that your recovery could get better. You could access genetic potential you didn't know you had, in other words. That is fascinating. Now we've seen that with ketones before. Ketones act as uh, an HDAC inhibition, an inhibitor, right? What that means, again, is that ketones have the same effect, but it turns out that exposing yourself to high degrees of exercise and lactic acid can cause this. The point is, is working through some pain that's good pain is going to quite literally, in almost all facets of your life, make you stronger, mentally more resilient, Mentally, smarter. Muscles, more resilient. Recovery, more resilient. Our bodies have ways of gifting us for being good to them and for doing things that require hard work. Hard work always pays off, even down to a biochemical response in your body. I'll see you tomorrow.